Hey everyone, welcome to how to find the points of inflection. This is Nicholas JMV. Okay, so the objective today is given a differentiable function, you're going to be able to determine the points of inflection. You're going to need to know how to do this derivative or take a derivative of a polynomial function. And the idea here, the point of inflection or a point of inflection is where the concavity of the function changes, meaning going from that U-shaped concave up or to concave down and vice versa. So I've got one example I want to show you, and here it is. Find the points of inflection of this polynomial function. It is differentiable. It's a polynomial, so we're not going to have any trouble there. So let's go ahead and get started. So points of inflection, we want to be thinking second derivative. So uh, let's go ahead and rewrite our function here. And I'm going to have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the first derivative. So just a simple power rule. Okay. So we get 3x squared plus 6x and the derivative of constant 0. We're not going to look for the critical numbers there. It's not what it's asking. We're looking for possible points of inflection. So let's go straight to the second derivative. So we're going to have 6x plus 6. Now, just like the first derivative, we're going to set the second derivative equal to 0 to list our possible points of inflection. Um, and I'll go ahead and factor out the 6 here. And I know that x is going to equal negative 1. That's our only possible point of inflection. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we simply make a sign line. You might call this a sign analysis depending on the text. And people do this differently. I'm going to go ahead and put negative 1 here in the middle. Then I'm going to put my x plus 1. I don't have to put the 6 there. We are multiplying, but the 6 is always positive, so that doesn't matter. And we'll get the sign of our second derivative here. Now, in order to have a point of inflection, we want to see a sign change here. So if I plug in a number greater than negative 1, okay, like 0 or 1 or 2, I'm going to get something that's positive here. If I plug in something that's less than negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, like negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, it's negative. And notice the sign change. That's exactly what we wanted. So we know that negative 1 is going to be a point of inflection. It actually occurs at, if we plug in negative 1, you get negative 1, if we go back to the original, negative 1 plus 3 plus 4. So uh, uh, 6. So the point of inflection is going to be at negative 1, 6, okay, by plugging that value back into it. It is a point of inflection, so negative 1, 6 is a, I'm going to abbreviate, point of inflection because the sign changes from negative to positive at x equals negative 1. Okay, that's the idea. You want to be able to explain that. Okay, so that's it. That's that's uh, finding a point of inflection. It's the same as you would do with the first derivative, but they call those critical numbers and relative maxes and mins. We call on the second deriv derivative possible points of inflection, okay, and they are possible points of inflection, then they become points of inflection, okay, uh, based on whether we see that sign change or not. Questions or comments, you can go ahead and type them below, everyone. We'll see you next time.